This friggin' prohibition can't drink no more ever since they passed that 18th Amendment. We do it anyways, of course, but the rules they ain't safe. You get a batch of bad moonshine and you lose your eyes. Maybe you lose your life. It's a shame. They got bootleggers. Run it in the night, try not run police cars. You lose control of that, you crash, you're gone. We have to meet in these underground bars like this. Little stone caves. I feel like an animal trapped, just me and my Jack Daniels. I hate it. I hate it with everything I got. A smile on my face. <laughs> You're watching NBC with the 7 o'clock news. It's early in the morning here, and we're going to start it off with some world events. Uh, the, Mexican, the Mexican president, Venustiano Carranza, has been assassinated. Here in the U.S., a bomb exploded in the J.P. Morgan Bank building in New York City, New York City killing 30 and injuring 200. In entertainment, Eugene O'Neill's first full-length play, Beyond the Horizon, has been produced on Broadway and won a Pulitzer Prize, marking the beginning of the modern American drama. KDKA, a, Pis a Pittsburgh Westinghouse station, transmitted the first commercial radio broadcast. In science, an American chemist, William Draper Harkins, postulated the existence of a subatomic particle, the neutron, which is a heavy particle of no charge. That's been the 7 a.m. news. <laughs> I'm gonna do a character for this one because it's just cool. Ignore these. Uh, Ford is one of the most recognized car companies on Earth, and it was obviously founded by the Henry Ford. Uh, not his first car company, fun fact. Uh, his first one, he abandoned back in 1903, like it was a child on the curb. Now that one, thanks to its investors who weren't so willing to give up, went on to become Cadillac, which is now owned by his biggest competitor. So that's pretty neat. Uh, he was born to a fairly, fairly poor fa fairly poor family. Uh, he was born in Dearborn, Michigan. He loved machines. Took apart watches when he was a little kid. Started working on tractors. You know, the kind of things you'd expect from him. And uh, he really didn't care about his workers, even if he destroyed unions constantly. I guess he just figured he treated his workers well enough as it was. Because he did invest scientific measurement the best he could. And he got his, uh inspiration for the assembly line from watching Chicago butcher shops. Leisure activities were on the rise in the 1920s, including dancing, board games, baseball, baseball, tennis, And the movies! Charles Lindbergh was a U.S. Air Mail pilot who won the Orchid. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Okay. Um, he flew across the entire Atlantic Ocean in a plane called the Spirit of St. Louis. The flight took 33 hours and he traveled 3,600 miles. While Lindbergh's flight was not the first transatlantic flight, it was the first non-stop transatlantic flight. And he was given a Medal of Honor and became world famous afterwards. After he became a celebrity in 1932, Charles Lindbergh's one-and-a-half-year-old son was kidnapped, and the kidnappers demanded a $50,000 ransom. Lindbergh paid the ransom, but unfortunately his son was dead and his body was found in the woods later. He died in 1974 and was buried in Hawaii. Okay, well not too long ago they passed this little thing called the 18th Amendment. And it, on its own, didn't do anything. It just gave permission to make another law, which was called the Volstead Act. This made it so that it was illegal to who sell, manufacture, or transport alcohol. You can still possess and you can still drink, though. That's what we found out loopholes. We started making these things called speakeasies. And private people would make this little thing called moonshine. 
Now, if moonshine's bad, it'll make you lose your vision, like I mentioned before, but... If it's good, it's good. High proof, high alcohol content. Knock your, sh knock your shoes clean off and knock you right off your feet. Good stuff. Downside, it's got no flavor. Now that gets around by these people called bootleggers. Soup up their cars, try to outrun police officers through the night. They go and they go, they keep the booze in their boots, hence the name. Sometimes they keep them in false bottom trunks, underneath their seats, anywhere they can hide them. Anywhere the cops won't see. After all, if the pigs don't see, don't kill them. Then there's these things called rum runners. They're basically the same, but they do it across the ocean, you know, steamboats, rowboats, that kind of stuff. Now this 18th Volstead Act pair, this Siamese twin of non-alcoholism, it's only driven up the crime rate, it's only driven up the rate at which people drink, it has been a resounding failure for the nation. And the dangerous stuff that we've had to do to get our alcohol fix has only led to more casualties since this whole idiot thing begun. And that's why the people up at Capitol Hill are talking. And they're thinking about putting thing through this thing called the 21st Amendment to bring back alcohol and stop us from having to drink this garbage. Burns. Help. I hope they go through with it. So many good people died over what's going on here. Some nonsense politics. Makes me sick. <laughs> America became more of a consumer society because of the increase in wealth. Welcome back to NBC 1920s News. This time in the PM of the decade. Our first story is the tabloids, right from the pages of your newspaper. These stories may shock you, they may horrify you, they may make you recoil with how fake they are. Nothing but exaggerated hogwash, but they're cheap and they're fun. The second story tonight is the radio. Three million people now keep these little boxes in their home to make us feel just a little bit closer. Next up, the cinema. The year is 1927 and the first talkie has been released. <laughs> Until now, the action has instead been summed up by the narrator or orchestra. <laughs> The fourth and final story tonight is the magazine. Time Magazine, now world famous, made its debut earlier this decade, decade back in 23, and is getting up to full swing. Gas-powered tractors made it so much easier for farmers to get their work done. They went from 40 to 50 hours of labor to 15 to 20. The spread of electricity made it easier for many families to have less work. Manufacturing skyrocketed since 70% since of the industry was run on electricity. All of the things led us to five new technologies of the 1920s. Radios, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, and even irons. Get it now in the 1920s. And then there's Capone. I, I know I mentioned him before. But he was a real monster. He, he ran a bootlegging operation out of Chicago. The only one who ran the entire town. Folks down in Cicero, they thought he was a hero. He'd spread the wealth, try to give back to the poor. We thought he was some kind of well-dressed Italian Robin Hood. We didn't know. Time came when there was a thing called the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Too sober to even remember it. <sighs> he had his men dress up like police officers. Go into a warehouse. They pulled out Chicago typewriters, gunned down seven men. Seven innocent men. Photographers got there before the police even heard about it. Police had to have been bribed. People started getting ideas. Ideas that weren't good for Capone, for anyone. The people turned on him. Some idiot formed his little gang called the Untouchables. A group of people, crime fighters to take him down. Sounds like something of a crappy pulp comic book to me. And I finally got Capone, but not in anything gang related. Like any good government takedown, they had to find some sort of scapegoat to get him, so they did it with tax evasion. Took him off to a little island prison called Alcatraz, where he died of, believe it or not, possibly, this is a little rumor that's been going around the tavern, syphilis. What a fitting end for the crime king of Chicago.
baseball star. He was elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1963. He was not an orphan, and his parents just thought he would be better off at St. Mary's Industrial School for Orphans, Delinquent, Incorrigible, and Wayward Boys in Baltimore. Uh, Ruth actually believed he was a year older than he really was for most of his life, and he still celebrated his birthday as if he was a year older, even after he found out. That's Ruth for you. <laughs> for the first time, people lived more in cities than on farms. Calvin Coolidge was the only president born on 4th of July. Coolidge was popular for doing nothing. He rode a mechanical horse for exercise at the White House. Welcome back to NBC 1920s News, this time the business section. Today we're going to talk about three things that have been around the nation today. First off is scientific management. Scientific management is a revolutionary new form of management where the workers are treated with respect, they're paid well, and they work shorter hours. And why are we doing this? Because back in the Gilded Age, the workers weren't respected. And that led to worse products. Turns out, if you treat a worker like trash, they don't want to make things as well. The Soviet Union is learning this currently, given that it's the 1920s. However, we have evolved. The scientific management system pays workers better, gives them shorter hours, more break times, and it does the, the two day weekend with the five day work week, and the eight hour shift. Now why are we doing this? So the worker works better. And this allows them to have more leisure time and more cash to spend, which has led to an economic boom, which leads us into the second subject, our grand flourishing economy and all of the changes coming with it. Right now there's a Model T driving around outside, and aside from having to meet up a punk teenager, you know what that means? It shows just how big government has gotten. You know why it's gotten big? Because before, when they first came around at the turn of the century, they were only for the rich man. A novelty toy, if you will. Now, your average blue-collar worker, the kind of men that would make them one of Ford's factories, can drive one. They can afford one. They have the free time to use it. And this just goes to show what kind of things are going on out there. People are playing tennis, people are playing baseball, people are watching Babe Ruth on the television. They're listening to the radios. They're going to the films to see silent films like Charlie Chaplin with his wonderful toothbrush mustache that I'm sure none of us will ever regret. It's a wonderful time out there. The economy is booming and this is allowing us to break through some of the social norms before because back then, back in the Gilded Age, a worker was stuck in his place in the caste system. He had nowhere else to go. He couldn't go up, he could only go down. People starved to death. People worked themselves to the bone. It was terrible. But now, now things are finally good. Things are looking up. The economy is only doing better. People are only doing better. Women got the right to vote. It's going wonderfully. And that leads us to part three. A sprawling industrial complex. Thanks to scientific management and the increased flow of money, we can afford to start new businesses, start new ventures, invest in new things. New technologies are being invented every day. Electricity is spreading through the country. New factories lead to new jobs. New jobs lead to new workers. And new workers lead to more money spreading through the economy. It's a self-fulfilling cycle. And it's wonderful. Everything's working out. It's a bubble and it's never gonna pop. Do you hear me? The 1930s didn't happen. I'm out! Go ahead. Well, things changed a little bit. You ought to heard me talk about the 18th Amendment and what it did. Well, in between that and that wonderful, wonderful 21st, was this little thing called the 19th Amendment. Women can vote now, which sounds like a great idea on paper, right? Sort of like that uh, socialism. But, but, there's these little things called flappers running around now. I don't feel too comfortable with them. A bunch of women wearing flashy dresses and short hair doesn't sound right for this decade. It doesn't feel right. It makes me uncomfortable personally. Like, you think you can show some shoulder? It's against dress code. Then there's the KKK. Not a bad person, right? I, I participated in my bit of bootlegging during the day. But these, this is a different kind of bad person. You got a, you got a bunch of folks running around in bed sheets, dressed like some sort of old world ghost, traffic cones on their heads. They look like idiots. They call themselves wizards. But what do they do with these magical powers? They hang, they burn, and they lynch our African American population. Boy, 
I sure do love participating in the democratic process. Ah! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> We love voting. We love the 19th Amendment. It's good. Bunch of hatred-filled goons going into our capital trying to get laws changed. Think of what they're going to do. Think of the kind of lobbying that will accomplish. Think of all the black people that are burning and hanging. It's not a good thing. Alright? Sure, we, we give them the right to like exist. They can't vote yet, but they'll get that eventually. Like, technically they can, but we, we don't let them. What was the last thing? Harlem Renaissance. Speaking of those wonderful African American fellows, there's the Harlem Renaissance, which is a wonderful new movement going on in the South. It's uh, spreading its way up here, actually. It's, it's a bit more uplifting. You see, there's this wonderful little thing called jazz music spreading around. It's this swinging, bluesy little thing. It's, it's like the blues, but happy. You got the saxophone, you got the drums, you got the big brass sections. It makes people move. And it's actually kind of opening people up to the whole African American thing. Which just shows the KKK to be evil, hate-filled people they are. Now, I wish that kind of change would happen a little faster, and it should happen all over the world, but on the bright side, we're going to have a decent soundtrack to it. <laughs> hey, friend, have you heard the tale of Charlie Chaplin? He's a wonderful man. It was in his second Keystone film. Kid Otto Racist, Venice, in 1914, the Chaplin's immortal screen alter ego, the Little Tramp, was born. However, no things were not always so happy for Charles. His grave was robbed long after his death, and they held it for ransom. They stole this man's body. It meant that much to them. Now, Chaplin was a special actor for the time. He never had any music training, but he composed his own music for his movies. Even if he did not know what up here, he knew what down here. God bless Charles Chaplin. And goodbye to him.